declaratory relief, and similar remedies under Rule 63 of the Rules of Court. An action for declaratory relief should be filed by a person who is interested under a deed, a will, a contract, or other written instrument, or whose rights are affected by a statute, an executive order, a regulation, or an ordinance. The relief sought under this remedy includes the interpretation and determination of the validity of the written instrument and the judicial declaration of the party's rights or duties thereunder. These are the requisites of an action for declaratory relief. First is with respect to the subject matter of the controversy, which must be a deed, a will, a contract or other written instrument, statute, executive order, regulation or ordinance, or any other governmental regulation. Second, the terms of said documents and the validity thereof are doubtful and require judicial construction. Third, there must have been no breach of the documents in question. Number four, there must have been an actual justiciable controversy or the ripening of seeds of one between persons whose interests are adverse. Fifth, the issue must be ripe for judicial determination. And number six, adequate relief is not available through other means or other forms of action or proceeding. This is the distinction between the first and second paragraphs of Section 1, Rule 63. The first paragraph of Section 1, Rule 63 provides the general circumstances in which a person may file a petition for declaratory relief. Any person interested under a deed, will, contract, or other written instrument, or whose rights are affected by a statute, executive order regulation, ordinance, or any other governmental regulation may, before breach or violation thereof, bring an action in the appropriate regional trial court to determine any question of construction or validity arising and for a declaration of his rights or duties thereunder. So under the first paragraph, the action for declaratory relief must be filed in the RTC. For the second paragraph, it provides that an action for the reformation of an instrument to quiet title to real property or remove clouds therefrom or to consolidate ownership under Article 1607 of the Civil Code may be brought under this rule. The second paragraph of Section 1, Rule 63 specifically refers to the following. First, action for the reformation of an instrument recognized under Articles 1359 to 1369 of the Civil Code. The jurisdiction is with the regional trial court considering that the action is incapable of pecuniary estimation. Second is with respect to action to quiet title authorized by Articles 476 to 481 of the Civil Code. The jurisdiction is either in the MPC or RTC. It is dependent on the assessed value of the property in dispute. Number three. With respect to action to consolidate ownership required under Article 1607 of the Civil Code in a sale with a right to repurchase, the jurisdiction is with the RTC, considering that the action does not involve title to or ownership of real property. In short, this is not a real action. The action is merely to obtain judicial order to effect the registration of consolidated ownership. What is the purpose of declaratory relief. Number one is to seek for a judicial interpretation of an instrument or for a judicial declaration of a person's rights under a statute. The purpose is not to ask for affirmative reliefs like injunction, execution, damages, or any other relief beyond the purpose of the petition as declared under the rules. Second purpose is to ask the court to make a proper interpretation of a written instrument the instrument pertains to a deed, will, contract, or any other written instrument. Or to make an interpretation of a statute, executive order, ordinance, or other governmental regulation. When may the court refuse to exercise its discretion to grant declaratory relief? The court may refuse to grant declaratory relief when, number one, the decision will not terminate the controversy or uncertainty giving rise to action. 
Second, the declaration reconstruction is not necessary and proper under the circumstances. Third, if before the final termination of the case, a breach or violation of the instrument or statute occurs, then the same may be converted into an ordinary action. Let's study this problem. Junel's name was placed in the roles of certified public accountants accredited to practice accountancy in the office of the Central Bank of the Philippines. By reason of a requirement of the Import-Export Department of Central Bank that CPAs submit to an accreditation under oath before they could certify financial statements of their clients applying for import dollar allocations with its office, Junel's accreditation was nullified. Junel filed a petition for declaratory relief assailing the central bank's requirement that CPAs would be governed by the rules and regulations of the central bank and not by those of the Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountants. Junel alleges that such requirement made him suffer serious injury and has resulted in the unlawful restraint in the practice of CPAs in the central bank. Question. Will the petition for declaratory relief prosper? The answer is no. The complaint for declaratory relief will not prosper if filed after a contract, statute, or right has been breached or violated. As claimed by petitioner himself, respondent had already invaded or violated his right and caused him injury. All this giving him a complete cause of action enforceable in an appropriate ordinary civil action or proceeding. An action for declaratory relief should be filed before there has been a breach of a contract, statutes, or rights, and that it is sufficient to bar such action, that there had been a breach which would constitute actionable violation. The rule is that an action for declaratory relief is proper only if adequate relief is not available through the means of other existing forms of action or proceeding. Can court orders or decisions be subject of declaratory relief? The answer is no. Court orders or decisions cannot be the subject matter of declaratory relief. Decisions are not included within the purview of the words other written instrument. The same principle applies to orders, resolutions, or decisions of quasi-judicial bodies. The fundamental rationale for this is the principle of res judicata. Parties are not permitted to litigate the same issue more than once. Judgment rendered by a court or quasi-judicial body is conclusive on the party subject only to appellate authority. The losing party cannot modify or escape the effects of judgment under the guise of an action for declaratory relief. And that ends our discussion for declaratory relief and similar remedies under Rule 63. Thank you.